could the transmitter cause the cot death? And I said, I don't know. I said, but I'll look into it. And then I found that microwaves were involved and I knew what microwaves did. And a while later, I went back to the doctor. I wrote a paper on it and I said, there's your answer. Microwaves can cause cot death by two or three different mechanisms. Um, there's your answer. Um, and then, uh, for some reason, he told somebody who told somebody, and people started phoning me up and writing to me, saying, can you explain this or can you help with that? Uh, I've never actually asked anyone if I can do anything. They always come to me. And then the police came to me and said, we're getting this new Tetra airwave system, we don't understand. Uh, what's happening, can you read all this scientific rubbish and just put it into Janet and John and tell us? And I said, of course I can. Uh, so that was published and, and since then it, it, it's, it, it snowballed and snowballed and snowballed and now I receive up to a thousand communiques a week from various countries, various people and uh, I, I can't handle it. So, uh, and I'm, I'm here now because somebody asked me to come here. Hello, this is Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net, and I'm here with Barry Trower from the UK. And we're going to be talking about specifically this document today that was found on the White House website. And uh, it's entitled, Realizing the Full Potential of Government Health Spectrum to Spur Economic Growth. And it says, President's Council of Advisors on Science Technology, dated July the 20th of 2012. Now, um, we're quite honored to have an opportunity to do this uh, document with uh, Barry today. And a little bit about Barry uh, is he is, of course, visiting uh, the United States right now from the UK. And uh, in the very early 60s, he was trained as a government microwave warfare it, by the establishment for the microwave warfare establishment. And he looked at aspects of microwave warfare 
and when he finished the time that he spent in the military, uh, he had had a lot of expertise in the microwave field, and he was asked to carry on with this research. And um, it was a new Cold War that he discovered with microwave. Would there be anything else you'd like to add to that? Only that uh, microwaves from the 50s were used as a stealth weapon, as they still are today, only they are obviously much, much more sophisticated. The 50s was really a trial time where different countries were just using people who had no choice, prisoners, uh, psychiatric patients, dissidents, <clears throat> and they were just, it was really beam them with this for as long as it takes and see if this frequency or pulse frequency has any effect. And if it does, we try a different type of group. But they had uh, 25 different categories of people, uh, including children mm -hmm. and pregnant women. Mm -hmm. uh, 25 different categories. And so from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we've been developing microwave weapons right up to today, and they are incredibly sophisticated today. So if any government says that microwaves have no effect on you, the question is why have you been spending billions upon billions of dollars with the military for the last 60 years improving them. Well, that would be true. And in this document, <coughs> Barry, um, it has a number of experts that are involved mm -hmm. in this particular technology and in this particular document. And I'll just name a few of those experts now. Uh, they're called the key uh, members and, ex and spectrum experts, and they would include, and not limited to, um, Stanford University, because of course many universities are involved in this technology that are funded by the military. Um, but the White House uh, Spectrum Management Team is Google, Microsoft, Stanford and Harvard Universities, and I want to draw the attention of Harvard University as being one of the universities involved in the origination of the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars uh, uh, technical manual that is on StopTheCrime.net, but also uh, Virginia Tech, UC Berkeley, the National Telecommunications and Information Association, the FCC, and NSA, and there are many others that are involved in this as well. So as we go through this, Barry, I would like for you to explain um, some of what you see in this document, if you would. Um, because it's going through uh, a 13 pages. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep okay. it in me. It's, uh, it's 13 <clears throat> pages, and um, they're talking about what the purpose of the spectrum is for. Mm -hmm. And if we could flip just slowly, uh, each portion, it represents one page that is on our website. Okay. Um, one of the things you said the universities, yes. for instance, yes. <clears throat> um, they may not be guilty. And, and I can give you an example. The government holds massive amounts of funds for research. <clears throat> and the universities apply for research grants. Now, to give you one example in the United States, uh, the government asked one university if it could devise a method whereby if you beamed microwaves into somebody's ears, the vibrational frequencies in the cochlea, they would actually produce sound in the person's head. So nobody else around you can hear but just the one person being beamed can hear the sound. Mm -hmm. And the university were told that this would aid the deaf enormously because people could talk into a device and they would just hear it straight through. 
It was also picked up by the superstore manufacturers who said, well, we can, we can also use this for good because if we have shoplifters, we can beam the pulse frequencies to the shoplifters to say, you're being watched, put this down, mm -hmm. and we will prevent crime. And that was used for good. But it didn't take people very long, especially the military and other superstores, to think, well, hang on, we can use this for our own devices. So the military can now put voices into people's heads to do whatever deed they wish it to achieve. And the superstores have also realized that rather than say, put that down, you're going to steal it. If you're indecisive and you're, you're, you're shopping, they can say, you really do want to buy this. And after nine months, uh, and, and I, I, I got the figure from one of your courts because um, somebody took one of your superstores to court for beaming them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, they made a phenomenal profit in just nine months, phenomenal profit. Uh, but because your Federal Communications Committee say microwaves are safe, the case fell. Right, because they have standards. <coughs> no. So, well, they know what the standards yeah. are. They're so just not. All I'm saying, when you're reading out the universities, um, they may be acting totally innocently. And it may be that the recipients, after the research is done, say, now we will turn this to our advantage. And that's very possible. Because oh, so much is compartmentalized. <laughs> and, and that's how they're keeping this monster escalating yes, to it, the it, degree that they are. It's deception. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I find so true in the silent weapons document is they talk about <clears throat> the real and the stated goals. And so what we're seeing are what the real goals are, but what they tell us the stated goals are. So we're buying a lot of this advancement in technologies based on what sounds good as a stated goal, but then there's the real goal. And I think as a global population, uh, when you look at the silent weapons protocol, um, that's that 44-page document that we spoke about just a bit ago, uh, we can see that this is a well-planned uh, program overall by a few. And uh, so certainly while many are unaware of what is happening, a few are. The most wealthy, knowledgeable, the ones with the mythologies to carry out without our knowledge or consent. This was programmed in 1976. I can tell you from the title, I know it's programmed in 1976. Because in 1976, your government produced a list of all of the illnesses that you can develop from continuous low-level microwave radiation. Everything, neurological, physiological illnesses. <clears throat> but in the same document that was released under the Freedom of Information, and I, I've referenced it in my latest paper that I'm reading tonight. Okay. If you get a copy of that paper, it, it's referenced in there. But what your government also did that was rather naughty, um, they asked all of the other governments in the world, the influential governments in the world, basically to deceive the public. And they were to deceive the public really for two reasons. The first is, is to avoid lawsuits. And the second was to protect industrial profit. So the bottom line is massive corporate profit. At oh, all absolutely! Costs. And your government printed it, and I've I've, yes. it's, I've written it down. Um, they say uh, that basically the public must be deceived uh, to protect industrial profit, <clears throat> um, and and this is here. It's in the title: economic growth. That's exactly right. And also in the silent weapons document that you're well mm. aware of, they also talk about the key to global control is through energy. And we see that happening now with the frequencies and the micro. <coughs> it's all energy. We're energy. And they want to control it all. 
even us. There is a counter argument, um, mm -hmm. and I, I deliberately do not take sides. Mm -hmm. I, I look at arguments from both sides, mm -hmm. and I decide myself who I think is right and wrong. But a, a counter argument that I do not accept from the English or the American governments is that enemy countries there are there are some 40 countries developing this technology uh, for all sorts of reasons and the governments argue that to combat if the waves were used on the United States they would know exactly what to look for they would know the frequencies they could jam them uh, and I can go along with that we pay governments to protect us. What I cannot go along with is the fact that 25 categories of persons without their choice and in many cases without their knowledge are being experimented upon with these particular frequencies to cause all of this. That is wrong. Now, would you say uh, at this point, at the increased level of technology, that we're rough, roughly um, unaware up to maybe 50 years, uh, they have an advanced technology base 50 years beyond our even being aware of what they have available? Are you asking, um, I'm not sure I understand fully the question, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, what we're, what we're understanding minimally mm -hmm. is that they, there is a 50-year <clears throat> variation of advanced technologies that are out there 50 years ahead of time that we are unaware even exist right now. No. Um, no, uh, um, you, you can't have technology 50 years hence. Uh, we, we do not have... You can have ideas 50 years hence. Okay. Uh, you cannot have technology 50 years hence because the world can't keep that many secrets. Uh, and scientists, there are scientists, and, and I go to countries all over the world. I go to countries that despise the United States, and I go to countries that love the United States. I go to countries that are at war with countries I've just left. And I really don't take a stand for or against anybody. But the, the scientific community that I talk with at these conferences, uh, they often say to me, if you go to this country, please warn them about this. Scientists in the whole do not want mass genocide. They do not want total government control because they have families and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and a lot of the help that I get uh, are from uh, talking virtually all night to international scientists who say well we've done this and, and they will say well we've also done that uh, and if you put these two together it, it agrees with what he says. Um, scientists talk and 50 years hence uh, it, it wouldn't be kept secret. It okay. wouldn't be kept secret. The ideas can be there, but um, the knowledge which I have today of where we are at the moment cannot be exceeded because we do not have the people that clever to exceed it. Would you say, uh, as far <clears throat> as the microwave um, targeting of mass populations now, which would which is what mm -hmm. this is showing is the intention before where we were talking about more specific targeted people hundreds of thousands globally yeah and now we're looking at a map <clears throat> here that really does show uh, a mass targeting particularly of the United States oh absolutely um, if you can, and really this is one of the ideas behind the smart meter, where they put them in everybody's homes. <clears throat> what they can do now, uh, they can watch if they wish. I'm not, they have the technolo technology too. Um, they can watch every single person in their house. 
They can watch you go to bed. They can watch what you're doing in bed. They can watch you on the toilet and in the bath. They can hear every single word you're saying. They have a machine which will measure your hormone levels. They have a machine provided they're within 150 feet. They can measure your brain activity and they can even tell what frame of mind you're in. Now, if they can do this to an entire population, <clears throat> most people would not like it done to them, but they will be unaffected. And from the government's point of view is, we're really not interested in 98% of the population anyway, but we want the 2% that could be dangerous to the American citizens. But that doesn't apply. They then go on to say, well, hang on, there's a group there that are obstructing us doing this, demonstrators. We'll watch those. And, and then you get to people of specific religions and people with long hair and people who smoke cannabis. And, and, and it, the, the, the level comes down and down and down to the point where they're, they're actually monitoring about 75% of the population and they have the computer technology to do this. Well, that is what we're understanding uh, is uh, the intention yep, of this. Yep. And uh, what this is, of course, uh, depicting is psychotronic weapons for mass mind control and uh, about quantum computers <coughs> mm -hmm. and mind theft. Right. And uh, invasion of the human brain with artificial intelligence. Right. Could you explain that to people, what that means? Well, the first thing, um, when you, with, with this, when you blanket a whole area, there are different reasons for monitoring populations. <clears throat> and right now in the United States, there could be, to my knowledge, between 40 and 45 countries blanketing people with microwaves and you don't need all you need is a few vehicles uh, blanketing people with microwaves for specific purposes now I grew up in the Cold War era with spies <clears throat> and forget James Bond and everything to do with silly things like that the main weapon of a spy any spy from any country the main weapon is blackmail. That is the main weapon. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, if I want to, if I'm from a country and I want to get a spy into the United States, they're going to need documentation to get a passport or a birth certificate or some form of documentation. You need a professional person or two, like a lawyer, to sign an affidavit or something to say, I have known this person since they were zero years old, they are now 22, I can identify them, everything, they are a person. <clears throat> now, to get a professional person like a lawyer or something, if you blanket an area with microwaves, you know every conversation they're having, you know where they go, what they're doing. Now, for instance, if you have a person who is a paedophile, a person who has a mistress or two, a person who is uh, a secret alcoholic or a gambler, or, and they would lose their job if it became known, mm -hmm. all they have to do <clears throat> is go up to that person and say, this is what we have on you and you're from another country, obviously. This is what we have on you. <clears throat> we will give you a choice and you make your decision now. And this is what they do. You make your decision now. Either this goes in your local press, in the Sunday newspaper, you will lose your job, your children come out of university with disgrace, your wife will leave you and run away and hide, you will lose your house, everything and you will never work again you will be a beggar on the streets if you're lucky or 
you can sign this piece of paper to say that you know this individual, they are an upstanding person, they deserve the passport or a job reference, they should get this job because you, they are highly recommended. Okay. You will sign that, we will go away, you will never see us again. Most people, given 10 seconds thought, will sign and walk away and breathe a sigh of relief. That is one aspect of this, the blanketing a whole area. So it may not be the United States, it, there could be up to 40 countries. And I can assure you there are 40 countries who would like to get spies in the United States. And when they're in, they're in. And then it goes on from there. So it, you have, I don't like the word mind control because you don't really control the mind. You can change it to act in a different behavior, but you, 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 you do not permanently control it. Um, <clears throat> you can make people do things and that's very easy. I could do it. I could do it to you in less than three days. So, I, such as assassins? I could turn you into an assassin in less than three days. Mm -hmm. um, that's easy. <clears throat> um, so, there are lots and lots and lots of uh, different reasons for blanketing an area uh, and watching people. Uh, and 98% of the population probably will not be affected. But it is the fact that you have no choice. And if, if you upset somebody in the government, uh, they can abuse their authority and target you. Uh, in this document, <clears throat> next to the map that's actually in the document itself, it says that they will use extended white space system already in operations as a starting system. Well, um, there's a contradiction in terms there, because white zones, white area, white space is usually an area totally free from radiation. Or it can mean an area which is blanketed, like a, bl a white blanket across an area. So different countries use different terms. So it could mean a totally free area, a zone free area, or it could mean a, a, an area which is already totally blanketed so that no other country can put their frequency into this area because it would be jammed and only the United States will control this area. Okay, so in respect to this document, this could be a white space then in place that would protect the United States. It, it, this document is so bland that when you read anything, it could m mean three or four different things. Okay. It, it really is so bland, and deliberately so. And, yes, exactly. Well, they also talk about modifying the rules <coughs> to allow general authorized access devices to operate in two bands. Uh, are you familiar with what this may mean, or is this all well, part Well, like, again, um, I mean, there are uh, around... 300,000 million bands they could use. Mm -hmm. So whichever ones they're, they're talking about, I don't know. Again, it, it isn't specific enough. Mm -hmm. uh, they've deliberately, it sounds interesting to the person and profitable and the technology is going to roll, but what they're going to do with it is anybody's guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, this was written in case it fell into enemy hands. Mm -hmm. So people wouldn't understand what they were doing or clever people wouldn't understand what they were doing. Well, we do know uh, one thing just by the title, which I know you've discussed in Ireland when you brought this um, document up, where it said, realizing the full potential of government-held spectrum to spur <clears throat> economic growth. Exactly. And the economic growth is not for the country's citizens. It's for the industry. It's for the corporations in the industry. Exactly. That's correct, okay, okay. And then we have, again, we have a variety of participants here, uh, major industry participants. Mm -hmm. um, Google, and we know the World Bank is involved. We know that much of the corporate banking structure globally is involved and interested yep. in this. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm not taking their side, but I do talk to these people. Mm -hmm. And some of these people, if... 
if government advisors and chief scientists approach somebody in industry and, and the person in industry generally has done a degree in law civil law or something or some other economic degree they do not have degrees in nuclear and atomic physics they do not have qualifications in microwave warfare they do not have other qualifications so if and you know, in England, it might be a knighted person. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody who is highly respected by the government with a government chief advisor goes along and sits down and says, we can make you a lot of money if you do this, and we are also going to benefit the population, they will believe them. So again, if you have the industries there, it is probably not true that they know or realize the harm that they are going to do because they have families and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and I suspect a lot of them wouldn't go ahead with this if they fully understand the situation. Um, there are many uh, scientists um, who uh, realize what their um, uh, scientific um, experiments have now caused. They're not being used for the benefit of mankind. And they're now seeing how those are being used against their children, their families, and the world at large. And they're coming out and they're letting this be known. And they're now being targeted with microwaves. And the inventions that they've created are now being used against many of these whistleblowers, would you say? Yes. Um, and I can give you a specific example from a, a, a chief scientific officer in England. But if you're going to become a whistleblower, you must realize, first of all, you're going to receive death threats. And these are very serious death threats. You are going to lose your job. Your children are not going to get a job or go to university. Uh, it, it is a family sacrifice as well as yours. And, and I can give you an example. <clears throat> I, re I received many cryptic and strange messages from senior persons. Um, and I received a message from a very, very senior government scientist in the English, in the top secret uh, experimental place in England. <clears throat> And he said, I need to talk to you, Barry. And I said, okay. And we met. And he said, I'm going to give you the perspective from where I am sitting. He said, we have received a contract from the government to do research. <clears throat> I'm researching microwaves, the effect of microwaves on the brain and the heart. He said, now, I am one of the country's leading research scientists. What they have asked me to do is study the brain and the heart being exposed to various microwaves, a specific pulse frequency mm -hmm. known to affect the brain and the heart. Mm -hmm. He said, now, I know and you know, because a part of my degree, it was experimental physics. <clears throat> he said, I know and you know that if we're going to do a study on the heart and the brain, <clears throat> we're looking at about 15 years. It will take about 10 years to do the study and another five years to tie up the loose ends, write it, have it peer reviewed, go to publication. Mm -hmm. So he said, you and I know, because if I said to you, how long would it take you to do these experiments, you would say to me, 10 to 15 years, mm -hmm. which is what the drug companies do when they're testing a new drug. It's always a minimum of 10 years, maybe longer. <clears throat> they don't always get it right, but at least they, they have a go. And he said to me, there's a lot of money involved here. He said, now, do you know how long they've given me to do the experiments on the brain and the heart? One of them, 10 minutes. 
The other one is 20 or 25 minutes. He said, I can do them both in an hour and have time for a cup of coffee. He said, now, I know that when I do these, the results are going to show safe, 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 safe. And I know they are going to use this with the stamp of my laboratory to say, this is safe, sell it. And this particular system has been sold now to 150 countries as safe. And he said to me, <clears throat> now, I've done nothing wrong. I did the experiments. I have produced the results, which are safe. He said, but I know this is going to be abused. I know people are going to die because this is going to be published. Women are going to get breast cancers, miscarriages, all sorts of things are going to happen. He said, but they are going to do that, not me. He said, now I am in a top government scientist job. I have a top salary. I have two children at university, one at college. I have a mortgage on a big, beautiful house. If I spill the beans, I will lose everything today and I will never work again. The children come out of university. My life will be a mess. He said, what do I do? And I said, well, you only have two choices. You give up your family and your children's university education and everything, or you keep quiet. And those were the only two choices. And he decided to keep quiet. Well, of course, we know in many of these decisions, the, <clears throat> um, the dangers then beyond the family yeah. And the, cre you know, the fact that the family is going to be assaulted and confronted by increased exactly. frequencies anyway, as well as all of his friends and the rest of the world. Um, well, So this is the dilemma that some of the scientists are put in. So even when you read out laboratories, there may be, the scientist may not have done anything wrong. He did, hadn't done anything wrong. Um, he did what he was asked to do. He gave the results he was asked to give. Um, it's the other people are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, I, I'm very, very wary about reading out lists of corporations and laboratories and because the people responsible may not be responsible. And I, and I, can, I can see that where they're compartmentalized mm. and they really are unaware. Yeah. Uh, I had a few other questions That's too. Okay. Um, I know that you... Um, were uh, part of the government back in your early days mm -hmm. um, with a government a microwave warfare establishment and you were carrying on research. Are you involved with the government at this point anymore or are you completely separated from the functions that you were previously in working with? Oh no, completely, completely separate now. Okay. I mean then I had top security clearance. Mm -hmm. um, I'm completely away from them now, absolutely away. It's, I have nothing to do with them. Okay. What, with all of the people that you speak with, are there um, countermeasures that you're aware of coming online to help mitigate some of the damaging from the effects of the targeting on some of the people now that are being severely electronically harassed? Uh, yes and no. I'm very, very cautious about uh, devices, medicines, uh, or anything to do with countermeasures. <clears throat> I, I often receive letters from people saying, would you endorse this? Uh, and, and I always say no. Um, unless somebody can prove through rigorous, rigorous, I can't say the word now, uh, uh, rigorous, rigorous scientific experiment that something works. Um, it, it may work, I, I don't know. Um, but there are all sorts of charlatans who will make a device uh, to sell to people who are vulnerable mm -hmm. um, to make money. 
another way in which corporate, <coughs> corporate profit yeah. sharing. Um, so the devices may work. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I've never tested any of them. Uh, but if somebody produced, I mean, there are obviously, if the body is suffering, there are obviously chemicals and medicines that will help. Um, and they will help. For instance, boosting the antioxidants, mm -hmm. or boosting the nighttime melatonin. That certainly works. Um, but uh, you have to be very, very careful about uh, buying devices that will protect you. Um, they may, uh, but, but they, they may actually be even more dangerous, especially if they are jamming signals because they're also sending other microwaves into your body, you know, so you, you have to be incredibly careful. <clears throat> um, since this is now a new Cold War that we're finding ourselves in. It's a Cold frequencies. War, yes, it's a Cold War now between, I would say, certainly 15 to 45 countries. So everyone's targeting everyone. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, and, and I can be even more specific. And um, when I speak to schools, um, uh, you see, the, 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 the problem is microwaves are so easy to produce. And lists from the lists I, I, I got from when I was talking to spies <clears throat> um, and things like this, the lists are available now. So if you can, all you need to do is make a microwave transmitter, which is incredibly easy, and add the pulse frequency, which is even easier. Uh, you can make these weapons. <clears throat> so, and what I say to schools is, to the to the students in schools, I say, please be incredibly careful. Every time you touch a keyboard or an iPad or an iPod, every time you put your finger on any microwave device that transmits, up to 45 countries can be storing that. So if you are uh, a young couple in love and you've got the, the people in separate houses and, and they're in their bedrooms and one is da, 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 can we do this da, 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 I'd love to how about this you know uh, send me a picture of, of, of your chest zonk there you are and they carry on now I, I say to the schools assume that 45 countries are actually recording this and they have the capability. And when you are a graduate and you are a professional, they're going to come back and they are going to sit in front of you one day, if they wish, and they are going to say, do you remember writing that? You should have a criminal record. Your job doesn't allow people with criminal records. How about just doing a little favor for us and we'll tear this up. And if you think of what teenagers and the average American student sends 3,000 texts a month, if you imagine some of these texts <clears throat> going backwards and forwards, up to 45 countries can be storing this and you're all clever and you're all going to university and you're going to be exactly where they want you. And if they want to, and they want you, they're going to come back, and you're going to regret this. Speaking of universities, here in the United <coughs> States, as well as internationally, mm -hmm. in, in the United States specifically, we have a new curriculum that has been introduced called Common Core Curriculum. And it is a curriculum of uh, essentially dumbing down both math and science. They will not be teaching cursive writing any longer, which helps to fire off the right and mm -hmm. left brain. The children will not be learning how to read a calendar. And math and science is going to, uh, as I say, be dumbed down. 
and in the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document, they say that it will become enslavement by lack of knowledge. So in conjunction with the microwaves that we're all being faced with, that are certainly causing um, confusion, inability to sleep, and levels of anger, and all types of emotional, mental, and physical ailments, along with the dumbing down of the global population, whether everyone is targeted <coughs> or not, they're being targeted through the entire process of the system, even beyond the frequencies. Would you say that's your experience with what you're seeing in other countries as well? Well, funny enough, we, we, we touched on this with the Congress lady uh, lunchtime today. Um, and you, you, you've, you've touched an area that leaves an incredible bitter taste in my mouth. Um, and the, the problem as I see it, uh, the problem as I see it, now, <clears throat> we have virtually the entire United States being microwaved. And there, there are a, a small group of people in the United States who are untouchable, namely your federal communications committee. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a complaint or lawyers have a complaint or anybody else has a complaint, it will go to Congress people or senators or government officials. But no matter where these complaints and questions go out to, they all funnel back to one person. Even the judiciary cannot get involved in this. They've been whitewashed out. That's correct. So everything goes back. So what we're saying in the United States, or what we're seeing in the United States, is that you have one person, maybe two, certainly not any more than three, who is dominant in a committee. And this person is the only person in the United States who can be asked these questions. The only person that nobody else is allowed to, to answer them. Nobody judges, nobody can answer these questions. Everything is funneled through to this one person. So you have this one person <clears throat> who is all powerful. He is above the judiciary, above Congress, above everybody. Yes. Because Congress cannot change his safety levels. So you have this one person and now, <clears throat> this is where I have trouble with this, because with the current state, and this is well-established research, and it is your research, not mine, it is your government research. <clears throat> in 60 years' time, if nothing changes, in 60 years' time, three generations of 20 years, you are going to be down to one-eighth of your child's children's population, one-eighth. Now, how many people walking the streets today are going to be working and paying taxes in 60 years' time? Not many. That's correct. So, the United States, if nothing is done, is going to become unfunctionable on the world stage you're not going to be able to run your industries. You're not going to be able to pay your taxes. You're not going to be able to fund your military. Mm -hmm. So the United States on the world stage is going to disappear. They say in many of the <coughs> documents, the source documents that we have read, that of course the preeminence of the United States is being dismantled. Within 60 years, the United States won't exist, That's, as you know it today. Yes. You will be in the position that England was in at the end of the war, when we just didn't have, the, our soldiers had been shot. We didn't have the people coming back to run the factories, the buses, the trains. There was no, there was very little tax money. We couldn't afford anything. And a worldwide appeal went out for any nation to send as many people as they could to run our buses. And, and now this is where you're going to be in 60 years. But the one thing that really, really puzzles me 
is why is this all-powerful American doing this to his own country? Well, uh, certainly some of the source documents that we have referred to address that. <clears throat> this is for one word. You have system. one person, maybe no more than two, who are dominant on this committee. Mm -hmm. Why is this one person, because he has to know more than me because of the virtue of his position and his expertise in microwaves. He has to know more than I do. And if I know this, he has to know it. So he has to, in, in, my, uh, in, in my brain only, he has to be intentionally bringing the United States to its knees. And the question I want to know is, is what, and, and I can't get around that, but he's made himself untouchable. Yes. And why should one person decide Congress will not interfere with my levels? The judiciary will not interfere with my levels. I am going to control this. And he must know he is bringing the United States down. And you only have 60 years. And that is it. You'll be finished. Well, certainly many of the source documents that we've reviewed that are on our website. <laughs> he ignores them. Know. That's the thing. Well, he, he they, many them. of them have, are written mm. by them, though, too. Mm. And we're looking at transhumanism now as a coming agenda, where they're going to be bringing online a replacement for humans. And we see um, much of that research occurring now in most of the major universities, certainly here in the United States. Uh, but this document here, this NASA plan, uh, talks about uh, robot cyborgs and humans. And we're really starting to see the replacement of humans by machinery. Well, uh, again, um, and I'm not being deliberately obstructive, but I'm going to rush to the defense of the industry. Uh, and, I, and I do know, because I've spoken to the scientists, <clears throat> The government approaches an industry and it says, if we can implant, uh, and it can be nanotubes, uh, which will be triggered, a chemical will be triggered, or an electrical signal will be triggered with a microwave pulse going to the brain, or um, you have the, the creatures that live in the oceans that photosynthesize from the sun. Mm -hmm. And when you photosynthesize, like euglena uh, or cocolithopause, um, they, they produce minuscule electric currents. <clears throat> now, they can be guided to certain areas of the brain by viruses. And the industries working on these, they really the paralyzed get electrical signals going in the body to move limbs and think. And by beaming them with microwaves, you can actually get paralyzed people moving again. Or people, brain damaged people, you can get the electric current back into that part of the brain. So they are doing an immense amount of good. But again, as I said earlier, the harm comes when the military come along and they say, now, if we can make these people do this, if we put them into these people and we stimulate this part of the brain, uh, for instance, uh, a balance between the frontal cortex and the amygdala, uh, which will induce severe violence, uh, you know, so you you can again you can use things for good and they're developed for good, but other people can use them for bad. So uh, again, I can say that because the corporations are there doesn't mean that they're bad. It means that they they have actually done some incredibly Nobel Prize winning research. That somebody has then said thank you very much. We paid for this. We have the rights to this. Now we're going to put our scientists to work. So there is a seesaw effect here. And um, <clears throat> you, you have to be, I think, be incredibly careful reading out names of universities and, and organizations because they may be doing it for good. And they do do absolutely brilliant work.
And that's absolutely true, and we know that much of what they have done has been hijacked. Oh, it's all been hijacked. Yes. All of it yes. has been hijacked. And that's why we're here today, <clears throat> yeah. because we're sitting here in a very precarious, yep. hijacked reality. And now, where does this where does this hijacking... You see, if it's been hijacked, somebody authorized it. That's right. And if somebody authorized it, they would have had permission. Now, where is this leading back to? That is where we should be going. The source of this. The source. Yes. And it's even kept from presidents. I mean, the, the, the people involved here, and it's the same with the English government, you have just a small band, no more than a handful of people who are all powerful. And they know what is really going on. And they, presidents and prime ministers and ministers and senates, and they come and go every few years. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely immaterial to this. <clears throat> They're told what they need to be told. That is it. It's just like a script for a Hollywood yep. movie. Yep. And, and the people at the top, they lie for a living. And, and I've met them. They lie for a living. And, and the truth is so... Um, obscure to them, they, they wouldn't know the truth if they tried to tell it. Lying is just norm. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have this small band of people and they are controlling virtually everybody else. So if, if they say to the president, I am the country's top scientist, this is safe, the president believes them because he's only going to be there another two years and then a new one comes in and they say to the new one, this is what you will say, this is what you will do. Well, this, of course, is why we have Bohemian Grove and the Bilderbergs. They, they set global policies. They meet and they organize and orchestrate the corporations. And we've heard much about the Bilderbergs there in, uh, in Europe. And their offices, of course, are in Switzerland. And they meet annually, just as the Bohemian Grove does here in Northern California. Uh, meet once a year and at times in between to create policies. I mean, personally, I've, I've never met them and I've never attended a meeting. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I honestly, I, I can't comment okay. on that. Uh, I also have a question. Have you heard uh, anything about the um, activation of catalytic uh, genetically spliced virus and bacteria? I know you were just mentioning some of this. A vi uh, via bacteria hybrids by the use of advanced targeted um, photo uh, centronics and have there been there have been rumors from insiders for years that psycho um, citronic can also be deployed to reduce a person's natural immunity allowing the opportunist virus and bacteria the ability to gain control when they would normally be suppressed Could this be true? <laughs> I mean, you've, you've covered uh, about 50 years of complicated research there. Um, I mean, just any three of those words could spark about an hour's conversation. Um, is it being done? Yes. Can I go into that? No. It, it's, it's, I, I can answer it. It is far to, we would need to sit here for a week mm -hmm. and not even scratch the surface. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, it, it can be done. Are they doing it? I don't know because they haven't told me. Is it possible? Yes. Um, but I, I, I don't know that they're doing it because if they are doing it, it is in secret and I don't have access to their secrets. Um, I've never been told by anyone that they're doing it. Theoretically, it can be done. Whether it is being done practically, um, I don't know. There are people concerned, too, about the electronic warfare and <coughs> how we can use it against terrorists. But it seems as though since we have 45 countries all engaged in inflicting um, electromagnetics on other countries. It seems like uh, we're all battling one another. So do you see uh, an opportunity to control this? It's uncontrollable. I mean, what we have now started 
uh, is a runaway train. Um, it is absolutely uncontrollable because if the United States stops research, there are 45 other countries, some of whom probably do not like the United States, that will say, that's good, we will now be the world leaders. It, it is uncontrollable. Um, people now have to progress. Where it's all going to end up, I don't know, but it is uh, it is absolutely uncontrollable now. There are too many different laboratories over the world studying too many different things. There are uh, too many different organizations looking into microwave weapons. Uh, it is absolutely uncontrollable. And as you said, we've now gone into a new Cold War. Um, and uh, I don't know where it is going to end. Well, this certainly is a <clears throat> silent weapon system for oh, a quiet war. Oh, it's been that for 60 years. Yes. There's no problem with that. Um, somebody asked and was wondering, of course, about <clears throat> Wi-Fi in yeah. restaurants, etc., and in yeah. the coffee shops that are globally situated now with Wi-Fi opportunities. What would be your, what would you say to the general population about Wi-Fi and what other kinds of, of um, repressive stances can they make against this attack of artificial frequencies? Well, Wi-Fi uses a known weapons frequency. Mm -hmm. um, that's known. And it is going to cause harm. There is, there is no doubt there. Uh, and again, the, the, the owners of cafes and bars that have Wi-Fi, uh, they would have been told something that wasn't true. So the only thing you can do um, is advise them to fit a fiber optic cable, a high speed fiber optic cable, um, if they can be told the truth. Um, so. Uh, it, it, again, it is not their fault, <clears throat> um, and people come in with their computers and their smart thingies and, and they sit at the tables and, and they press away. Uh, so the, the, the cafe owners, they're just giving people what they want. They're making money from it because it's good for business, they're employing people, which is good. Uh, but if they were to just run a few cables, they would make just as much money. Uh, and they wouldn't be doing harm. But you can't tell them they're doing harm because of the control over the press and the television companies and the radio companies. Because if you even begin to mention it, the industry will come down like a ton of bricks and say, we are pulling out our advertising. Now, how do you like that? So what we're really <coughs> saying is uh, for the protection of people, they have to either be hardwired and or stay away from locations that have Wi-Fi. They need to stay as far removed from the cell phone towers, the antennas, the smart meters, the electro smog that our cities are experiencing. Yeah, the, the, Is that the only thing? <clears throat> that well, the, the system can be made a lot more safe. Um, but, of course, they don't know it needs to be made a lot more safe. So maybe I'll talk from the Congress lady this morning. Um, if we develop somewhere there uh, and we can get something broadcast nationally. Uh, but at, at the moment, um, the system can be made a lot safer uh, all over the country to the point where the minimum of persons will be harmed. And that, how long would that take in order to implement? Oh, if you started now, you could, uh, and provided you had, I mean, there's, once the, this bubble bursts, there is going to be an enormous business for somebody, enormous profits in fiber optics and things to do with, uh, even cell phones, um, I've, I've read from Dr. Andrew Goldsworthy, who is an incredibly clever scientist from Imperial College, 
London. Uh, Imperial College is the sort of Oxford and Cambridge of London. And you don't get to teach there if you're stupid. Now, he has described how microwaves can be made safe. Mm -hmm. um, I don't understand at the moment the, the full technology behind it. But he has described how they can be made safe, and they will work. <clears throat> Fiber optic cables everywhere you can. Um, it, it, the technology is there to make, everyone can still have their toys, and they can still use them, and they will probably work better. Uh, and it will be a, a lot more safe. The, the problem is, it needs to get to everybody. Um, but it, it's the technology is there today and in terms of how long it would take depending on manufacturing outputs depending how quickly you could convert a few factories mm -hmm. and but whoever comes up with this first there is going to be billions upon billions to be made with this well the concern of course <clears throat> would be is that we have a corporate structure that is engaged in massive profit profits over people that are becoming quite ill. Yes, but they will. The profits will only last until people like me um, touch the right person who touches the right person who says, "Why does that man have so much power? Why doesn't he answer to Congress? Why doesn't he answer to the judiciary?" Why doesn't he answer to the president? Mm -hmm. and, and when the people in authority say, well, hang on, he has too much power. Let's ask him a few questions and see how right he is. Mm -hmm. um, and when you can show that this person is actually wrong, and I know he's wrong, and I would challenge him here to face me live on television, uh, and I would stand my ground and I would prove he's wrong in l less than five minutes. Um, when these people can be brought down, and it's not going to take long because these people have immense power, but there is one thing they cannot do. They cannot stop people dying. They don't have that power. God has that power, and, and they have no more power than God. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, too many people are going to die. Too many schools are going to get leukemia clusters. And when that happens, the swell is going to change. <clears throat> and I suspect, and I'm going to choose my words very carefully here, some industries are going to crash overnight. The shareholders are going to think, hang on, half my life is buried in this industry. Zonk. I'm going to this industry mm -hmm. and you are going to have some industries crashing and this is going to be money or orientated not um, orientated by morality it's going to be pure greed <clears throat> and one industry is going to crash the other one is going to go zonk with billions <clears throat> and we will have a safe system how many people have to die I don't know for us to get to that point. For you to get to, but I can tell you now, it will be between here and sixty years, hmm. if which we, is if not we, long. If we can survive <clears throat> sixty years under the current bombardment of frequencies, because people are <clears throat> becoming so ill. Already. Exactly, because I mean, your and the problem is, it was calculated uh, several years ago, and I have the paper. Um, the cost of your sick from electromagnetic radiation uh, and it was the tens of billions uh, and it is going up enormously so there's going to become a point when the cost of treating people uh, is just prohibitive for the country and people are going to die uh, and the bubble is going to burst and when it bursts I fear uh, a lot of very influential people um, could be standing in the dock. Um, and I, I really wouldn't like to be in their position standing in a dock. I mean, in my mind, and this is a personal opinion, 
a personal opinion. Um, and I'm not, it's whatever la, uh, libel, slander, I'm, I'm not doing that. But I would think with the death rate, an equivalence in my mind, and you can tell me I'm wrong, would be if Adolf Hitler stood in the dock for all of the deaths in the Second World War. Uh, I think it will be on that scale. So for <clears throat> the time being, right now, for those that are becoming aware of this enormous threat to humanity, uh, what would you say would be the most important things for people to do? Leave right it now? to me, and I'll tell you why. Um, the moment an individual puts their head above the water, the industry are so skilled with the government at putting people down that you won't stand a chance. You will lose your job, you will lose your family, you will lose your, lose your house. That, was, that is unnecessary. I, I don't need that. <clears throat> Leave it to people like me. Our work is slow, but we are getting there. I have now spoken to around 40 royals, leaders of gun countries, leaders of peoples, uh, the message is getting through. Nothing is ever fast, but we are getting there. But my advice to the ordinary person is leave it to us. <clears throat> we know what we're doing. We have the expertise. We've had all the death threats. We will get there. As we go along, academics suddenly jump in and they say, I'm an expert in this. I believe what you're doing, please let me help. And we are, get, we are getting there. It's not going to be quick. I mean, trying to stop the Second World War wasn't quick. You know. So if a person is, is going to take risks, I say, don't do it. Leave it to me. And people like me, um, let us do our job. So then <clears throat> what the average person yeah. could do is to stay hardwired with every opportunity for a communication wireless device that they have, keep it hardwired, spread this information everywhere they can, refer people to the YouTubes that you have so that we create a wider um, understanding through education of what we are facing. Exactly. I mean, if everybody started to go with cable, mm -hmm the Wi-Fi industry would collapse anyway. Now what about the schools? Because we're noticing now that in many of the major universities, in the elementary schools, in the high schools, because of the economy being what it is, and the telecom industry paying monthly uh, rent to anyone that will allow a, a cell phone sighting on police stations, on fire uh, stations here in the United States, we're seeing these cell phone towers crop up everywhere. They're disguised as trees, they're in church steeples, they're uh, in flagpoles. M some are not disguised, but many are. And uh, we're seeing just, they're lining all of our major uh, freeways nationwide now. And they're in communities everywhere. We just um, are staying at a place here in Portland, in downtown Portland. And collectively, from the antennasearch.com that we did, between the cell phone towers and the antennas, within a four-mile radius, we have 660 combination of cell phone towers and antennas. Again, the, the school governors and principals uh, would have been told from our one person that this is safe. <clears throat> and they would have been told there is nothing to worry about, research is inconclusive, it shows it's safe uh, and, and you're on a good thing. <clears throat> Whether or not there is a legal argument here, and there is in the United Kingdom, uh, in the United Kingdom a teacher, uh, and I was a teacher, a teacher is in, under law, a teacher is in what they call loco parentis. In other words, when a parent takes a child to school and hands that child over to the teacher, the teacher is obliged by law to look after that child 
as the parent would. You cannot do anything to that child that the parent would forbid. It's against the law. That's the easy bit. <clears throat> so if a and they are trying this in the UK now. If a, if a parent says to the teacher, I do not allow you to microwave my child, and the teacher does, the teacher is breaking the law because they are in loco parentis. It has nothing to do with the other laws. The teacher is breaking the law and the teacher can be taken to court. That's the easy bit. In the UK, to take somebody to court for microwaving, it has been estimated you need 31 million pounds. Mm -hmm. Well, that's putting an enormous uh, burden <clears> in <throat> on any of us <throat> to try to bring litigation against them. Well, they've said time and time again in England, take us to court. Mm -hmm. um, our part of the trial is three years. And three years have passed. Three years, no, our, our part of the trial, for all of the witnesses we want to call, we want to call a thousand witnesses, um, it will take about three years for our part of the trial. Um, uh, court costs £100,000 a day, no legal aid. Uh, then, of course, you have your three years. And if you lose, we'll have your house, your car. Uh, and everything else. Everything else. I'll, call, I'll, I'll talk just for a moment and let you okay. take a break. How's that? We discovered here in California uh, that all of the cities... Um, in fact, it's actually nationwide by executive order um, in their planning departments have to initiate what is called a climate action plan or an energy action plan. One of the two uh, is the title for this plan. In California, uh, where we have looked at a number of these climate action plans, it's requiring, even though California has an opt-out now for smart meters with the utility companies, uh, by paying a, a penalty. We have to pay $75 if you want to opt out initially and then $10 additional per month. Many people feel, of course, that's an extortion fee. But what we have found out now is that with these climate action plans, it is required that cities have smart meters and that all of the appliances uh, that are not Energy Star rated that are considered inefficient appliances must be retrofitted now <coughs> to the Energy Star appliances, which is a backdoor hookup of the initial intention to begin with. So many people now are discovering that the opt-out was an appeasement plan, a momentary sense of victory to reduce the, um, the fight against the smart meters. And while still they're being deployed, which is what industry calls this, a deployment, which is a military word, mm -hmm. uh, instead of installation. And this is now occurring nationwide here through the back door in all of our cities. It will do, um, because the smart meters can be used for their Wi-Fi enabled. They can, they can be used with Wi-Fi, with all other things. Um, uh, and again, we're back to the man at the top. <clears throat> and it's not until enough people have died uh, that these will be stopped and turned off or made safe. Um, but sadly, uh, people are going to die. They are going to make an enormous amount of money on the back of this. But... The, the, it's not until people such as myself can raise the issue with the people who need to be told and enough people have died that we can make this bubble burst. But it's, it's not going to be quick. Um, it, it's like the start of the Second World War. Um, you know, people are going to suffer, they're going to die, uh, and there is nothing we can do to stop that, nothing. The people are too powerful. It's like the stormtroopers, the SS. Mm -hmm. They are too powerful. They have too much power. They answer to nobody. And uh, the only question is, will the bubble burst before the United States can recover? That is the only question. Mm -hmm. And it depends on who I can talk to 
and when? In the United States. <clears throat> in the United States. I need to talk to Congress. If I can talk to Congress, uh, we may have a chance. Is there any uh, one or two people in Congress that you've identified? As I won't uh, give you their names, but to date there are two people who may be trying to get me to talk to Congress. Okay. And so then in the meantime, for the safety <coughs> of all, uh, all of us, we reduce our frequencies, we um, hardwire, and we do everything we can to get the word out on our level so that more and more people become aware, so that then in our local cities, in our city councils, in our county board of supervisors, we're getting this information to them who may also possibly be carriers to um, higher levels of government with the information that we provide them. So all of this is going to help your efforts and other scientists who are very much aware of this cataclysmic <clears throat> situation we're all finding ourselves in. Well, it is, um, and there, there is no easy way out of this. Uh, too few people have too much power. Uh, and and as, I, as I've already said, you know, we have people who do not answer to the judiciary and the president and Congress, and, and they are causing this. <clears throat> And until somebody actually takes their power away and questions them, uh, this is going to go on. And it's only a matter of how many people have to die until it can be stopped. Well, Barry, I want to thank you no, it's my pleasure. for speaking with us today <clears throat> and um, sincerely um, express our appreciation for what you're doing. But there is some good news. Um, there, and I won't name them on camera in case the industry suddenly turns against them, but to my knowledge now, and I've had no input into some of them, and I've had some input into a few of them, uh, so I'm not saying this is my work. There are lots of other people doing what I do. Uh, but there are now 10 countries who have realized this is happening and they are making changes to protect their children and their population. So the world is turning. 10 countries isn't a lot, but it's a start. And if we go back a few years, we didn't have any. Now we've got 10. Now with the level <clears throat> of remote uh, targeting and now the use of satellites as well, how are those 10 countries, even though they're becoming aware of this type of new weaponry, how will they protect themselves? I mean, what kind of shielding is available to them in the interim? Well, their scientists will be working on this now, um, and shielding is actually quite easy. Uh, so that isn't really a problem. I've spoken to some of the scientists. Um, and you could virtually make the shielding from half a dozen old bed, bed springs. Um, that's not complicated. So that would be more of an individual <clears throat> per house to house yeah, shielding? Yeah, yeah. But um, the 10 countries are now actively going against the industry. They're, they're still using all the equipment, but they're making it a lot safer and they're protecting their children. Is there, are there instructions uh, somewhere for people to put together these box springs to create shielding if they find that they're being targeted? No, and if there were, um, you would need quite a lot of expertise and you wouldn't be allowed to do it because it means transmitting certain waves and you wouldn't be allowed to do that. So it would be basically sending uh, waves <coughs> out against the incoming? Against, yeah. Okay. That was actually one of the questions that I had. Mm -hmm. So as far as the general population having that information, that's not... Um, as hard as it sounds, um, uh, for the general population, uh, and I hate to be bitterly truthful here, but I, I haven't come all this way to lie, um, the only thing you can do is protect yourself, protect your family, and wait out the war, and that's it. So 
there was a question specifically to that, um, and they said uh, they were wondering about what specific um, microwave signals and frequencies are deployed in this new Cold War weaponry, and what, in your opinion, is the core reason for them being deployed against the United States? And the second question is, do you have any experience with chopper frequencies being deployed as countermeasures? Well, uh, again, we, we can't go on much longer than this. So. Okay. Um, the, the problem, is, I call it the silly boy syndrome. Uh, you, you have these young graduate boys or girls, um, they graduate in computer science at university, they then go to a firm or a industry and they think, I'm going to make something that does this. Uh, and they turn out this little black box and it does all of this, but they haven't taken into consideration the frequencies, the pulse frequencies, the modulations, how it's going to affect children, adults, pregnant women. They have no knowledge. See, nobody says to them, go and talk to people who were alive in the Cold War. Study the frequencies used by industries and see if they're dangerous. Nobody says that to them. They make their little black boxes. They want to earn a million dollars. They put them on the market. <clears throat> And to all intents and purposes, they're considered safe. Um, they don't do the background checks. And, and this is the problem. So if you're saying what frequencies are there, I'm saying, well, how many apps are produced each week? Mm -hmm. How many little black boxes that you plug into are produced each week? How many different websites are there with, you know, it's, it's <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it grows, it evolves all the time, so you, you would never keep up with it anyway. And then one final question, mm -hmm. if I may. Mm -hmm. For a number of uh, people that I know that are um, stalked and followed by organized stalking <coughs> and are targeted mm -hmm. by neighbors next door, by people that live perhaps up above them in an apartment setting or below them, uh, or where they're walking on the street and they're suddenly targeted, they're going to have to wait out this war. If you're being stalked, they're studying you for your fear, electronically. If you're being stalked, and it's usually half a dozen big ugly men doing it, mm -hmm. um, I would go up to them uh, in a, and say, well, I, I finished in, in this store, I'm going over there, um, and then I'm going over there, uh, and you know, <clears throat> then I'll be stopping for coffee. Um, follow me, come on, um, and lead them around. Uh, they won't be violent to you in a public place. Um, it's no good going to the police. It's no good complaining to your representative because they'll say you're mad, which is what they want you to do anyway. Um, I would go up to them and I'd say, well, I I'm just here. I'm going to buy the most gorgeous pair of shoes. I'll be about two hours, but I would value your opinion uh, and come out with a shoe. What do you think about these and these? Um, turn it into a game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what you can do. Turn it into a game. Let them know you're not scared. So then <clears throat> what we're understanding with the documents, the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document, the um, NASA document, is just what um, Barry Trower has just said, that they're um, winning by creating massive fear and terror, uh, massive disinformation and media propaganda, and creating a division between all of us so that we don't band together. So I guess it would be fair to close this discussion right now with the understanding that we are in a war there are going to be immeasurable amounts of casualties. We're going to have to overcome our fear because we know that part of the corporate structure benefits on mass chaos. They make mass amounts of money on creating mass chaos, fear, and misinformation. <laughs> so in order to create our safer realities, besides getting all of our wireless technologies hardwired or to stay away from them 
and certainly not partake in establishments that have Wi-Fi and perhaps going in and letting them know why you cannot go into their establishment and passing out flyers and just covering information because we now are the media. And until I think it becomes trendy enough for other portions of the population to weigh in on this significant, irreparable, massive death campaign that is being waged on us through fear, again, media propaganda, we will be able to help you do your work as we're able to get this information out and live outside of fear and uh, understand that this is a massive <coughs> media propaganda campaign mm -hmm. and they're keeping us divided and it's all through lack of knowledge. There is just one last, quite an interesting conversation I had uh, with one of the people doing this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and he was, a, he was an incredibly highly paid lawyer <coughs> And going back then, it was something like $2,000 an hour. And he was involved in finding loopholes to support industry. And I was involved in a legal case, <clears throat> and I tend to lose. I was involved in a legal case. And <clears throat> during the lunchtime session, I, I went over the road and I sat in a pub uh, for a sandwich. And, and he came and sat down next to me. And I'm saying this because it may be a question that somebody listening to this can ask, somebody who is immensely powerful. And this man was immensely powerful. And he sat down next to me and he said, you know you're going to lose this, Barry, don't you? And he said, I've got this and I've got this and I've got this and I've got this. You don't stand a chance. And he was right. I, I didn't stand a chance. The people wanted representing. I was representing them. But legally, <clears throat> he had got every single loophole tied up. <clears throat> and legally, he was going to win. And he did win. <clears throat> uh, and he, he, he sat there <laughs> and he went on about sort of how insignificant I was and the protesters and, and everything else and how powerful he was and why didn't we give up because we didn't stand a chance ever <clears throat> and, I, and I said would you answer me just one question I said what are you going to say when you stand before God and that was it well this is a powerful way to wrap up our talk. I just want to thank you so much for saying what you've said today and we'll be sure to get this out far and wide and uh, support your work mm. with getting your YouTubes out and doing mm. all that we can. You see, I, I actually worry for these people because when they go into the afterlife and then they have to live the sorrow that they have caused to every single person in every single family and they are going to feel it yes. and there is no time limit they have no idea what they are going to face that's right and i think if they did they may think twice but i stopped this man in his tracks he had no answer where nobody in the afterlife is impressed by a rolls royce a yacht a big house fancy clothes, when you stand there naked and there is no lying, you can't lie. Mm -hmm. And they have no answer and that is what I would ask them. And if I saw the head of your Federal Communications Committee, that is one of the two questions I would ask him. What are you going to say to God? Well. Thank you. I think this really ends it on a powerful note, Barry. On one of the most powerful notes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.